Certain areas of filmmaking have go-to pieces of equipment to achieve a certain task. And in wildlife filmmaking, one of these pieces of equipment is the Canon CN20. This behemoth of a lens was released all the way back in 2014, and over the past eight years, it has become a staple for wildlife, documentary, and sports filmmaking. Chances are, if you've watched any wildlife documentaries since its release, you've seen some footage shot on this iconic piece of glass. Anyway, let's take a look at what makes this lens so special. The first thing that makes this lens truly unique is its focal range. It has a 20x zoom of 50 to 1000 millimeters, which is insane for a lens that is designed to cover Super 35 sensors. There are plenty of handheld and box broadcast lenses that have a similar type of range, but they are designed for much smaller sensor formats. This 20x range makes the CN20 one of the largest zoom range lenses for Super 35 and a fantastic optical achievement from Canon, especially considering its size. It also has a 1.5x built-in teleconverter at the rear of the lens. This incredibly satisfying switch will turn the 50 to 1000 into a 75 to 1500 mm While this is great, enabling this will affect your T-stop throughout the range. Without the extender on, it has a T-stop range of T5 between 50 and 560 mm with it then ramping to T8.9 at 1000 mm That is pretty slow, but when you consider the speed of prime lenses towards 1000 mm it looks a lot more manageable. When you toggle the 1.5x extender, these T-stops change by 1.5 times. So from 75 to 840 mm it is a T7.5, with it then ramping from 840 mm to 1500 mm to T13.35. This means you'll need to be shooting in bright conditions or with a sensitive camera where you can really crank the ISO up to shoot at these longer focal lengths. RED cameras have been used massively in wildlife for this reason, as well as their excellent frame rate options and fantastic image quality and resolution. The extender is also great for getting sharps, as you can easily just toggle it on, grab sharps and then toggle it back off again. As we said, this focal range is incredibly unique, and being able to go from 50mm, which is decently wide, and then crash all the way into 1000 is insane especially when the servo is set to its maximum speed of just 1.5 seconds. With this being possible, the lens being par focal would have been at the forefront of the design process for Canon. And as with lots of other cinema or broadcast orientated zoom lenses, the CN20 is par focal, which basically means that when you zoom throughout the range, your focal point stays consistent as you zoom. This means you can do awesome crash zooms like this and always have great sharps on your subject. This is another fantastic optical achievement considering the rest of the details of this lens. The first thing you probably notice with the CN20 is the size of the thing. It's pretty massive. However, considering its focal range, image circle, and T-stop, I think it's actually pretty well sized compared to Canon's longer teleprimes. It weighs roughly 6.6 kilograms or 14.5 pounds, and is roughly 40.5 centimeters long and has a front diameter of 136 millimeters while also being able to take 127mm screw-on filters. While this may sound massive and unwieldy, plenty of filmmakers have ventured off on location with it and captured some truly amazing imagery, though it definitely needs to be rigged up to get usable results and not cause damage to your kit. A common accessory we often see sold with the CN20 is a handle that attaches to the lens to make it much easier to carry. So with all of this in mind, it's pretty obvious that a nice solid 19mm lens support and bridge plate system is needed to save your poor mount. This will however result in camera packages that get real heavy real quick and will require some seriously strong support kit to go around it. The type of go-to tripod for the CN20 is a set of nice Mitchell mount sticks and a robust head such as the O'Connor 2575 that can give you a nice sort of platform for such a heavy and long rig. It will also be much smoother when shooting at longer focal lengths. The lens can come in either PL or EF mount. Both mounts have pass-throughs for metadata with the PL variant using Cook's iData protocol. I think really the only reason you would go EF is if you were shooting on a Canon camera that is limited to just EF, or want to use the Canon Focus Assists, which uses the EF protocol when manual focusing. Otherwise, PL is much, much more robust, and honestly, I wouldn't trust most EF mounts with a lens this long and heavy. It's also been designed for rough shooting scenarios, as it is both weather and shockproof. And that is great, as I've seen these lenses being used in some pretty harsh conditions. I've spoken to camera operators before who have used them in the desert, rainforests, and even in the Arctic chasing polar bears. The CN Zoom series, which now consists of the CN7, CN10, and CN20, take design elements from Canon's extensive broadcast lens line 
and then their more cinema orientated line of lenses and combine them together. This means that the CN20 is kind of a hybrid lens and can easily fit into a range of workflows. It has control rings for focus, zoom and iris, which can all be controlled via the included servo unit, manually or via motors as they all feature 0.5 pitch gears. The focus also has a 0.8 pitch gear as well. All of the rotations of these rings are lower than most cine lenses because the lens is aimed more towards documentary filmmakers. The focus throw is 180 degrees, which is a really great amount for people who want to pull focus quickly, which when filming wildlife, you will need to do. The lens has both imperial and metric markings on it, and one cool detail about these markings is that they are beveled, which means when you are operating the camera, you can see what focus distance you are at. You don't need to be standing next to the lens. The included servo unit is very well featured and can be removed really quickly with just these few screws. It has a pretty standard zoom rocker, which you can tweak the speed of in the servo unit. This means you can have the zoom go from 50 to 1000 millimeters in just 1.5 seconds, or as long as three minutes. The servo also features three 20 pin ports on the bottom, which can be used with zoom or focus demands or as a virtual output. These demands can be mounted onto tripods or rigs and be used to control the focus or zoom while you're still using your hands to operate the tripod. This is really common at sports events where you are going to be set up in one spot and will need to move your tripod around while also controlling the lens. It also has a 12 pin serial connection for connecting to your camera or power source via 12 pin or D-tab, depending on the configuration. Another broadcast feature is the included flange back and macro adjustment possible at the back of the lens. The flange back is used to create your back focus if you need to with a given camera system. The macro adjustment allows you to focus closer than the pretty long close focus of 3.5 meters or 11.5 feet. This gives the lens a little bit extra versatility, which is great for documentary filmmakers. Optically, Canon had a bit of a challenge on their hands with this lens's design. People wanted a broadcast style zoom lens that could deliver fantastic sharp images throughout its zoom range from corner to corner. And Canon did achieve this with this lens. Optically, it's pretty impressive throughout the range, which is an excellent achievement considering the lens's size, weight, and everything else that constricts its design. I think one of the biggest compromises that you'll have to deal with is gonna be the T-stop, but if you can deal with that, the lens is excellent in every other way, and really, there's no other lens on the market like it. With it being more designed for documentary, it doesn't really have a look. It's more designed to try and capture imagery that looks natural and detailed. The extender does soften up the image and create some CA, especially at the longer end though. The CN20 is an iconic lens that nobody else in the optical industry has really tried to compete with yet. While it is designed for Super 35 sensors, it can be used with full frame sensors if you toggle the 1.5 times extender. Honestly, this lens is a true engineering feat and is a lens lusted after by budding wildlife, documentary and sports filmmakers, wanting the zero compromise option for this market. However, it's roughly £50,000 price tag puts it out of reach for most filmmakers. Luckily, there are plenty of rentals throughout the UK that carry them, especially in Bristol, which has become the hub for natural history filmmaking in the UK. Let us know what you think of the CN20 in the comments below. And if you like the video, please give it a like and maybe even consider subscribing so you don't miss out on our awesome upcoming content. And thank you so much for watching.